program and remain standing for the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance and place your hands over your heart, please, and remain standing, if you don't mind, until the honor guard is off the stage. Thank you. Most of you may uh, know by now this has uh, been a very tough day in the city of Marion with the passing of uh, longtime mayor, mayor emeritus Rockwell Butler. And at this time, I'm going to ask the Reverend Bill Rucker to uh, come up and say a few words on behalf of Mayor Butler and in his honor. I thank Anthony and Mike for giving me this opportunity to say a few words. In August of 2004, Betty and I came here from Missouri for a trial sermon. It so happened that Bob and Llewellyn were in Indianapolis visiting Beth at that time. I said to Betty, there's no way we're going to know whether we belong here or not unless we stay and meet the mayor. So we, we waited an extra day. On Monday morning, he was in his office, and I introduced myself to him. So he asked, what did you think when you saw my classroom? I said, do you mean, what did I think of the King James Version of the Bible and all the student books being King James Version? And he said, exactly. I responded, if that's what your class is used to and likes it, then I respect that. Just don't expect me to use it throughout the church. <laughs> he responded, we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> and for 15 years, we did. It made difficult for you to understand. Bob, pretty outspoken. I'm pretty outspoken. But believe it or not, we never, and I mean never, had a crossword to say to each other. We had differences of opinion, but it was always said with mutual respect. The group at the end of our church hall, in order to begin, in front of which direction you're coming, is called the parlor. Nobody knows it as a parlor. They know it as Bob Butler's classroom. On Thursday after the election, I went to visit Bob and Luetta, as I do every Thursday. And he said to me, well, I did the best I could for Anthony. We worked together for a long time, and I owed him that. And I said, you did a great job for Anthony. Your newspaper ads and TV ads showed tremendous support and respect for him. And he replied, that being said, I think Mike would do a good job. That was the end of that conversation. No one, I mean no one, that ever loved the city of Marion more than Bob. And he had tremendous support from the weather. But as much as Bob loved the city, he did not compare to his love of the scripture as God's word. And he has tried to follow that in thought and deed on his life. We've all been touched by Bob in one way or another. And that influence will remain with us. I'm going to ask if we pause for a minute of silence 
and then, then I'll say a, a short prayer afterwards. So let's stop for a minute of silence and you say and think what it is you want to say. Thank you, God, for our relationship with Bob. May everyone know that like all of us, he was not perfect, but he had been made perfect in your sight. May his arrival at your door usher in all that we and he have come to expect from you and of you. It is in Christ's name that we pray. I, Doug Patton, having been elected as commissioner of the city of Marion, having been elected as a city commissioner city of, of the city of Marion, in the county of Williamson, in the county of Williamson, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, that I will support the constitution of the state of Illinois, the constitution of the state of Illinois, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office of commissioner of the office of commissioner of the city of Marion, of the city of Marion, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you.
with your right hand. I, Jim Webb. I, Jim Webb. Having been elected. Having been elected. As commissioner of the city of Marion. As a commissioner of the city of Marion. In the county of Williamson. In the county of Williamson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The constitution of the state of Illinois. The constitution of the state of Illinois. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. With the commissioner of the city of Marion. Commissioner of the city of Marion. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Support, that I will support the Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duty of the office of commissioner, of the office of commissioner of the city of Mary, of the city of Mary, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of Commission of the City of Mary. Of Commission of the City of Mary. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Constitution of the State of Illinois, and I will support the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office of the Mayor of the City of Mary, of Mayor of the City of Mary, to the best of my ability, to the very best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs>
brings us to item number four on the agenda, which is ordinance 3524. For clarity's sake, for our audience, would you please read the entire ordinance? Not all at once. Yeah, I can read the ordinance, please. Ordinance number 3524, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Marion, Illinois, Section 1. The mayor and commissioners are assigned supervision of and authority over the departments of the city government as indicated. Mayor Michael W. Absher, Public Affairs. Commissioner Doug Patton, Accounts and Finance. Commissioner John M. Barwick, Jr., Public Health and Safety. Commissioner Jim Webb, Streets and Public Improvements. And Commissioner John Stecklin, Public Property. Mayor, it's my motion that we Adopt ordinance number 3524. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion at this item? The clerk, please call me. Commissioner Patton? Yes. Commissioner Barwick? Yes. Commissioner Stefflin? Yes. And Commissioner Webb? Yes. And Mayor Abishan? Yes. Item number five on the agenda is ordinance 3525. We do not need to read this entire ordinance. Motion. Mayor, uh, yeah, I have read through the ordinance and realized that under Section 6, Expenditure Approvals, uh, we should line that up with a, uh, consistent with an ordinance passed, number 3468, which sets that limit instead of 5,000 to 7,500. And that being said, that would be my motion pending those changes. Case the motion on the floor is to pass item ordinance 3525 with the noted change in section 6, sentence 2, raising the limit to $7,500 to the 5000 which is an error that lines up with 3468. That's the motion on the floor. Okay. Any discussion other than this correction? Clerk, call the roll, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barbie? Yay. Commissioner Stefflin? Yeah. And Commissioner Webb? Yeah. And Mary Absher? Yeah. Item number six is ordinance number 3526. Which we will not read, but I will explain once we act on this. Any yeah, motion, please? Make a motion to approve ordinance 3526. It's ordinance established by the Chief of Staff. I'll second. All right, before we vote on this, I'm going to make some comments about this ordinance and what this is. This, as I'm sure, is very curious <laughs> to some people, especially some of the city employees. I'm going to take an opportunity to explain what this position is, how I envision, envision it helping the city. So, uh, this position is called the Mayor's Chief of Staff. And the reason it's Mayor's Chief of Staff is because I envision the Mayor's role as more than one person. <coughs> And that entails economic development, entails grant writing, it entails human resources and some other things that we'll need to take up pretty soon. The statutory requirement is that the mayor runs this office, and in our form of government, the commission form of government, it's my opinion that it's my job to uh, administer the city, and that's my intention to do so. That being said, I don't know where Mayor Mella skedaddled off to, but I bet he can agree with me on this point. Even since election day, I think, at last count, I've attended 20 events as the mayor elect. And the reality is, is the mayor cannot be in more than one place at one time. And while it's my intent and duty to be at City Hall and administer the city, I need some administrative help. And it's my choice, and the council, I hope, will defer to my choice this evening. And I'll introduce this person to you after we act on this ordinance and explain that person to you. This, Ordinance, I will ask our IT department to have up on the city website tomorrow so that you can see the full job description, which is essentially what this ordinance entails. Uh, but that's my explanation of it. I'll introduce the, the person involved here shortly. We have a motion, right? Is there a second? A second. second. Okay. Any other discussion other than my explanation on this item? Clerk, call the roll, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Yeah. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Yeah. 
we seek to do some very exciting things. Lynn and I have had lunch many times over the last many years talking about some ideas that was just not determined yet whether I was a chance to implement those ideas. So Lynn, thank you for believing in some of that. Thank you for your continued service. should not have had those guys on stage until we voted to hire them and we created the positions. Don't let me down, gentlemen. Uh, that'll come in just a minute. But that moves us to item number eight on the agenda, which is ordinance 3528. Uh, do you think we should read these or? or yep. Yeah? Okay. So whoever is going to make this motion, go ahead and read the entire ordinance, please. These are deemed. <clears throat> Sorry, ordinance number 3528. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Marion, Illinois, Section 1, the following named persons are hereby appointed to the positions of offices as specified for the term of April 2019 to April 2020. Uh, Lawler Brown Law Firm as City Attorney, Alex Ricks, City Clerk. Tammy Beasley, Deputy City Clerk, Steve Hale, City Treasurer, Brian Fisher, Safety Director, Jerry Odom, Chief of Fire Department, Terrence Henry, Information Technology Director, Doug Phillips, Streets Department Superintendent, Scott Connell, Water Superintendent, Brent Kane, Sewer Department Superintendent, Chris Jorgantis, Hub General Manager, J.D. Shelton, Cemetery Superintendent, Shana Askew, Animal Control Officer, Kathy Spicer, Code Enforcement Officer, Office, I'm sorry, Code Enforcement Office Manager, Stephanie Willis, Boynton Street Community Center Director, Josh Benson, Marion Cultural and Civic Center Executive Director, Jared Garrison, the Pavilion of Marion Executive Director, Latina Poole, Marion Senior Citizen Center Executive Director, Tracy Lowe, Water Department Office Manager, David Patton, Marion Carnegie Library Director. Section two, each of the aforesaid appointments are effective immediate, immediately. All appointments are at will employment positions. Mayor, that would be my motion to pass the approved ordinance number 3528. Okay, I'll second that. All right, any discussion with this? Any of these items? Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Steckler? Yay. And Commissioner Webb? Yay. And Mayor Rinella? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Interesting, sad, and exciting day all at the same time. And I really have struggled with how to deal with Mayor Butler's passing this morning and how to integrate that into the comments that I'd already prepared and how to honor his life. And uh, especially as Bob said such great words, or Bill said such great words about Bob. I'm not sure I can add much to that, and so I'm not going to try. What I decided to do to honor Bob was what I remember most fondly about him, and to tell you a story that he once told me. Because this, among all other things said, for me personally, this captures Bob Butler's spirit. So... Somewhere shortly after he'd become mayor in 1963, uh, my dad, I'm sure, could tell he's going to correct me on the dates here. But along that same time period, they were building Interstate 57, but it was not complete. And Bob was telling me the story about, now these are his words from a different generation, they're not my words, and probably not the words you think I'm going to say. But he told me about a hobo that had been arrested for vagrancy and that they had jail on a Friday night. Now, this was in the old city hall, which is literally catty corner from where we're at right now. And I believe Bob told me that his office at that time was on, basically his floor was the ceiling of the jail. Well, he, had, he didn't know about this, but he came in on Monday morning to hear somewhere early in the morning, something like this. We'll see how the sound effects go. And for the longest time, he couldn't figure out what that was. But it kept repeating. Finally, he called the chief and asked what that thumping was and got a very surprised reaction. Because to make a very long story much shorter, basically, they'd forgotten that they put that pressure down there on Friday. <laughs> so, he, somehow he, which this wouldn't go today either, but somehow he had acquired a mop handle and was thumping the floor of Mayor Butler's office. That was what the thumping was. So, Mayor Butler, being the attorney that he was, and even in the 60s, this was a pretty big public relations nightmare. It wasn't as litigious, of course, as it is today, 50 some odd years ago, but it was a problem. So he instructed the chief to make sure that the prisoner who had not been fed or watered since Friday got the best steak in town and made sure that he got two of them and that he was to take him back out to the interstate so that he could be on his way. So apparently that happened. And this, this is the part. So when the chief had done what he was asked and came back to City Hall. Bob asked the chief how it went, and he said, it went fine, what's her? He said, well, what did you tell the young man? 
And he said, well, I told him, I said, son, I hope this experience has taught you a very important lesson. And I hope, though, that under the circumstances you found that we treated you very well. But most of all, I want you to understand that you should have learned the error of your ways and that you should never come back to Mount Vernon, Illinois, ever again. <laughs> sitting with a man that was never anything other than a pure gentleman to me and a true icon to our city. We will all miss him. There's no question about that. And um, what an honor it is to be elected at this point and serve after him. On behalf of the city council, I want to thank you all for coming to tonight's meeting. I don't know this for the fact. Maybe... I'm wrong, but certainly since I've been watching, I do believe it's probably the most well-attended city council meeting in quite some time. And that's encouraging to us. We're grateful that you're here. And we're grateful that we have the opportunity to serve. And once again, Anthony, I want to publicly thank you for the help that you've given me these last three weeks. And most of all, just for your polite demeanor and being nothing but an absolute gentleman to me, just like your predecessor towards me and your sincere offer of help to me, which I know that I will take up, take you up. I do think one more time a round of applause and appreciation from all of us is due to Anthony Manella for his 42 past years of service.
We reached the moon's surface 50 years ago this year. Anyone under that age in this room probably takes that, for, that national effort for granted and that call to action as simply a paragraph in a history book. And while I know John F. Kennedy, Marion has some lessons to learn from our nation's moonshot. It was not up to one man to get us there, but the strength of character and ingenuity of an entire nation. It's my goal that 50 years from now, after most of us in this room are no longer here, that our children and our grandchildren that still choose to live here and raise their families here will reflect back on us and our efforts over this decade. And they will say they accepted the challenges of that day. They organized and measured the best of their energies and their skills. That they were unwilling to postpone the solutions. Thank God they set out to win. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to serve. May God bless you, our great nation, and the city of America.